<coughs> oh, that was a beautiful time to cough. Wow, I am totally out of frame. This is off to a great start. Everybody, my name is Bradley, and this is Crit Elixir, and uh, and today we are here for the very first episode of Dungeons and Dialects on this channel. I'm gonna do my best within the next couple of minutes to teach you how to do uh, a British accent for your D&D games. First of all, thank you so much for everyone that, that is subscribed. Thank you to, to the people who were already subscribed before this video even came out. Um, you guys it's so sweet just just super kind the tiktok community that i'm involved in is just is super super amazing and uh, and you guys have been super super supportive um this video is intended to be a bigger sort of uh, uh larger scale breakdown of the, the the tiktok that i made a couple days ago um sort of explaining this same topic uh if you haven't seen that video it's certainly not required for this i'm going to be recovering a lot of the stuff that i covered in there but in a lot more specific details so that way you can get a better idea of of what you should be shooting for uh, at the table. I'm not gonna go over a ton of like hyper specifics because I don't feel like that's useful. Um, for those of you that like that sort of thing, I can link some resources in the description of this video uh, I, that I found very, very useful for sort of reinforcing my own understandings of, of the British accent. Just as a quick disclaimer, I do have uh, professional training, so I am qualified to talk about this sort of thing. I have professional training in this dialect specifically, but I also have uh, in a couple other dialects. All the other dialects that I'll be covering on this channel, um, besides the three that I do have professional training right here uh, in, um, will be uh, just research-based, but I have used all, every single one uh, that I have currently planned to do, I've used in my D&D games um, pretty proficiently. So uh, you can at least trust the information that you're given that it will be functional in an American's D&D game. I have been a DM for, for quite a significant amount of time. I love D&D, um, arguably too much. Arguably it takes too much of my time up, but, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I also have ADHD, heavy ADHD. So when I'm able to hyper-focus on, on creating a video, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing, but sometimes I might occasionally sort of slip off into, into a tangent. I'll try to edit those out, um, but if I don't catch them, I apologize. Sorry, we're a couple minutes in and I'm already, I'm still rambling. It's important to note, I know that I said I wouldn't tangent too long, but it's important to note really quick that there are like 20, I think 27 different dialects on the British Isles, an obscene number of dialects. Um, and there is no way that this video could cover all of them, and I wouldn't want you guys to have to wait around that much, because that'd be a lot of technicality um, for a, a lot of minutes. So I won't be covering Cockney, I won't be covering anything else. This is this is the fantasy accent, this is the Queen's English. This is like a high sort of prim, proper English. I can cover Cockney later or other accents that are useful um, in dialect training if you guys would like. I will be going over slight variants, um, because even the Queen, Queen's English has changed over time, so there is some, some alteration between what a modern day English speaker would actually sound like, which you can expect to be using for an elf nobleman or something like that. I do use these accents for elves specifically. Anyway, all that out of the way, let's hop into the dialect. Number one, um, ours. Ours are probably the most defining attribute of the difference between an American and a British uh, English dialect. Um, because British people tend to drop their R's pretty frequently. Just drop them entirely, take them right out of the word. The only time you are not going to drop your R's is if there is a vowel sound immediately coming after the R in the word. So the example that I gave in the TikTok was carrot versus turnip, right? Carrot, there is an O immediately after the R's in carrot. So those are not dropped. So it says carrot in a British accent. Turnip, there is not a vowel. So that becomes turnip. T U R N, you see? So if I was role playing and and they my players are being served a feast and the mayor of the town comes out to announce that dinner will be um, dinner this evening will be the finest roast with carrots and turnips, I would say dinner will be served the finest roast with carrots and turnips. Uh, another thing that I didn't mention in the TikTok video, R's are also slightly pronounced differently when they are pronounced in British English. R is one of the most difficult consonants for first-time English language learners to learn. It's why there are those really unfortunate racial stereotypes about people not being able to pronounce their R's when they first come to America, because R is actually a really difficult 
consonant to pronounce in English, and most languages don't have it. R, r, where you have to curl the sides of your tongue up on the sides of your mouth. That's a really weird position to put your tongue in, and most languages don't require it. British people make it even worse. Um, R's, in their case, are pronounced very specifically. So when I said roast, roast has your tongue pretty flat on the bottom of your t uh, of your mouth and just the corners are tilted up but if i say it in a british accent it's going to be roast so almost your entire tongue is curled up on either side plus the tip of your tongue goes to the top of your teeth so it's roast versus roast roast you see Second topic is vowels. So vowels are a big deal. There are like 20, I think professionals say in English, there's 27 different vowel forms that, that, that you can have. And most of them are the same between American English and British English, which is good news. But I think about seven of them are not, seven or eight are not the same um, between the Queen's English and, and, and an American accent. So generally speaking, just as a general rule, I don't want to go through like specific technicality because that would take so long. Um, but generally speaking, your vowels are always going to be more rounded at the corners of your mouth. So when you're speaking, uh, you're going to bring it from here to here, okay? Uh, it's just sort of lazier, which is the opposite of, of the R situation that we were talking about, making it more difficult. This is making it less difficult on you. So if I was to say, um, carry, with that bright sort of carry, uh, in an English or an American accent, in an English accent, that would be carry. You see how my, my corners of my mouth are sort of pushed in? Carry. <laughs> I talk out of the side of my mouth sometimes. Carry. Carry. You see? Something like over would be over. So my mouth is almost entirely sort of like pushed in and down. If I was in a role playing situation, and I wanted to say, I will carry those over to Master Carter, right? If I was an NPC or a scribe or something, and I needed to, to, to take some documents, I would say, I will carry those over to Master Carter. I will carry those over to Master Carter. I will carry those over to Master Carter. So it's all sort of dropped. And it's not just an intonation. It's, it's very sort of like specifically and intentionally pushed in on the sides. Lastly, in the main points, we have T's. This is important um, because of that word, important. In English, in American English, we say important. We tend to replace T's a lot of the time with N's and D's. So uh, something like, something like, oh Lord, the example I used in the TikTok was uh, the fighter fights a creature in the water uh, or something along those lines. The fighter, D instead of a T, fights the creature in the water D instead of a T, you see? In a British, in like high sort of regality British, we're gonna be going for very emphasized T's. So the fighter fights the creature in the water would become the fighter fights the creature in the water. You don't have to be that specific about it, but the fighter fights the creature in the water. And that becomes much more emphasized and much more specific. Now, something that was brought up on that TikTok video was the fact that conversationally, and this is this was the main difference between um, past iterations of, of this British accent and new iterations is that conversationally, a lot of British people don't do this. In fact, a lot of British people are worse than us. A lot of British people drop the T altogether. So it has entirely to do with the type of people that you're dealing with. Um, but if you're speaking conversationally, you might even say the fight uh, fights the creature in the water. water. You see, you're dropping the T entirely, and that gets a lot closer to Cockney at that point. But that is what is considered a Londoner's accent, which is where the Queen lives. And that's sort of like the only difference between, well, not the only, but but one of the few differences between a Cockney accent and and like a, a highfalutin Londoner's accent, which is, which is, it seems counterintuitive, but it's not. It's absolutely true. Those are the main points. I'm going to go through a really quick lightning round of stuff that I didn't at all cover in the TikTok video, but that is also important for specificity and for keeping yourself consistent throughout a DD and d game. First is vowel length. So usually when you're taking an R out of a word, the vowels become longer by proxy. So it's kind of automatic. This is, if, if you're doing the R thing right, then this probably shouldn't be an issue, but it's worth mentioning. So if you say, I 
heard her at the bar, heard her, bar, heard, bar. That's going to become I heard her at the bar. So it sounds like the vowels in heard and bar are much longer than they probably should be. And it's just because you're taking out the R and replacing it with extra vowel, essentially. Okay, uh, second thing in the lightning round, the yod. This is where you add a Y sound where it doesn't belong. And it happens in British specifically on the U, like a really low centered U sound. It's super weird. Like in the word Tuesday or uh, news. So if you were to say, if you were to, if you were to be playing an informant, right? And you were to say on Tuesday, listen carefully to the news of the town crier. You would sort of drop those in. You'd say on Tuesday, listen to the news of the town crier. You hear that extra Y news Tuesday. It's not supposed to be there, but it is for some reason. I don't know. The last thing I would say that's important at all is, is differences in emphasis. So, uh, we always make the joke in my household, uh, when my dad really wants to be kind of goofy, he'll say, um, something with the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable, or in his case, the emphasis on the wrong syllable. But in British, it, it is actually that way. British English is super weird. Like in, like in garage becomes garage. So when we would emphasize the second syllable, garage, they emphasize the first one, so garage. Usually this applies only to etymologically words that are from French originally, which is not important to you knowing the accent, I just think it's kind of cool. So uh, with like the word mustache, if you were to say uh, the man with the silly mustache, that would become the man with the silly mustache. Mustache. See, the second syllable is the one that's emphasized in that circumstance. And that, that about does it. There's not a whole lot else that I can, that I can give you guys that'll be productive. Um, I'll say just some really final thoughts. Uh, if you really want an expert's take on all of this, look up a native speaker. Like, watch a TV show with a lot of British native speakers like Doctor Who or Sherlock. I think those are still available on Netflix. Find a podcast. Um, no Such Thing as a Fish is a really excellent sort of dorky comedy podcast that I listen to. Um, you could listen to, if you're into horror, the Magnus Archives is really excellent. They're not sponsoring me. None of these are sponsoring me. I just, I just, these are the examples that I would go with. If you want like a really good dialect for, for children and, and high Londoners accent for children, uh, Chronicles of Narnia series is really excellent. That one's good for a lot of accents though. Man, I love Chronicles of Narnia. And then I would say mess with the intonation. Um, a British accent tends to be a lot sing song -ier than an American accent, so like, just have fun with it. Make it exciting. And you can do a lot of things with the British accent because it is very, very versatile. It doesn't require a lot of strain. It's like an English accent where you can take it and use it for any character. Um, unlike other things like Russian specifically, you sort of have to have that in the back of your throat. With a British accent, you can do whatever you want with it. So you can use this accent for a lot of different things. And it's, you know, it's super useful, super versatile, and, and super fun. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. Uh, some of that was a little rambly. I'm going to do my best to cut it down in the future. I hope that this was super helpful for you for your D&D games, and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye.